video in my in my uh, phone I, I would I would uh, map it out and it's called God's journey and I video the girl getting my blood and all that stuff I remember while waiting that was two weeks ago so last week I was in Cebu with my my family by the way when I, when I got e EEG for the brain like EEG yeah yeah, yeah they, that stuff so I asked the nurse I saw nurse Oh, how, how's the reading? I know you're not allowed to say, but just tell me. <laughs> uh, sir, uh, there's some part of your brain that's kind of slow. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> uh, okay, no problem. I, I, I resolved in my mind that I have Alzheimer's. I resolved in my mind that I had it. And, 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 you know, it crystallized a lot of things in my life. I said, there's two things. You know, they, they say, you know, in your deathbed, you always say how I wish I spent more time with my family. But you know, the good realization for me is I did not say that. Because um, I felt I really spent a lot of time with my family. And uh, so I said I need to spend time at work. I need to spend time at work so that I could prepare my kids for it. So, in Cebu, I'm knowing to my family in the morning, uh, two, three. I was crying, crying. Without telling them, I don't support the vacation. Because it's a woman. So what do I do? Wow. I, I, I felt bad not because I'll be sick. I felt bad that I can't spend enough time with my family. So like, okay, I have like even four clear years of thinking. Then I was already preparing. What shall I say to the church here? Not, you know, I'll give up the pulpit. No. Because again, I can think. So, but I, I, I was just preparing myself. <clears throat> then Bambino, I happened to tell him, him being the eldest. Um, I told him about the situation and he said, uh, Oh, Dad, let's pray about it. So he prayed about it. This week, I had to see my doctor. And Bambino was telling me, Dad, um, if everything's okay, let's celebrate. And I told Bambino, Anak, if everything's okay, we celebrate. But everything's not okay, we'll celebrate. Because we should not forget. Diba, we, we have the thinking. We'll only celebrate if things go well. But if things doesn't go well, we not celebrate. As if God made a mistake. And the man, God didn't even make a mistake. Ah. If I am sick or the union, we will celebrate. Because I'm sick. But if I'm not sick, okay, we will celebrate. So talabang our family will always eat that, we celebrate. It doesn't matter. It will not stop. But, but, the, but the point being to me, you know, the, 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 the attitude should be, we will celebrate no matter if it goes our way or not our way. Because even going, even if, if it seems it's not going our way, you know, God, God knows what's right there. What, what's been, what makes me say that what his path for me was wrong? Hmm? I don't know, I'll say his path is wrong. So I, 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 that's why I titled my, my video, God's Journey. Because this is a journey between me and God. And I, I said, I, I, I will immortalize this thing. But no matter what happened, my desire now was to give glory to God. So we, we went to the test. We went to the doctor. And, uh, you know, by God's grace, the doctor said, I'm normal. <laughs> You know, I knew people say I'm abnormal, eh? <laughs> but I, I'm normal. I just lack vitamin D. Eh, that's surprising because during college, I got a lot of Ds. <laughs> that's, 
That's a joke. Well, I don't know if that's a joke, but my point is, I lack vitamin D, and I have to take two thousand, I don't know, milligrams, but whatever, of vitamin D and another medication or vitamins to help my memory. So you know, I'm here to say um, that you know, I I thank God really. I thank God, and I'll even thank God even though. If if things did not turn out well in, in my case. And I thank God because no matter what happens, we are to thank Him. And the, you know, the, the fact that I have a clear mind, you know, I just thank God. <laughs> I just thank God. All right, that was my uh, sharing for today. So in the future, if someone wants to share, just feel free to, to share. Yeah, Bambina, I think in the future will share, right? Um, today's message, by the way, happy Father's Day. Um, today's message, you know, when I was making the message, we're in with Genesis chapter 27. And I was asking myself, what's the title of this message? And uh, I titled the message, The Glorious Victory of a Father. The Glorious Victory of a Father. And uh, the Jews never, you know, who likes washing their laundry in public? Right? The dirty laundry in public. No one wants to that. No one wants that shown in public. The, the, the bickering, the fighting within the family, everybody wants to keep that quiet. But here, in Genesis chapter 27, the Jews was not ashamed to share their dirty laundry. I remember recently the daughter, the granddaughter of Duterte was fighting with his father in public, right? The, uh, of uh, the vice mayor before of Davao, Pulong Bayan, Pulong Duterte, and the, the, her daughter, they were fighting and it was nasty. And obviously, everybody enjoys it. We like a drama. We like that, that, that twist, that hatred. It's as if we're watching a telenovela, a Korean novella. And today we're looking at that, Genesis chapter 7, 27. A family feud, a fight. And we look at Genesis chapter 27, verse 1 to 46, 45. Here we see a dysfunctional family. A family feud involving every family member which ends up with a torn family and death threats here and there. Verse 1 to 4 goes, Now it came about when Isaac was old and his eyes were too dim to see that he called his older son Esau and said to him, My son, and he said to him, Here I am. Isaac said, Behold now, I am old and I do not know the day of my death. Now then, please take your gear, your quiver and your bow, and go out to the fields and hunt game for me. And prepare a savory dish for me, such as I love, and bring it to me that I may eat, so that my soul may bless you before I die. At this point, Isaac's health was very fragile. And Isaac felt that the time has come to give his blessings. And it, basically what happens there is he wants to put his, ha his house on order. Typically what happens there is the, 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 the patriarch would call all the males in his household and he would bless his successor so that the, the order, the pecking order within the family is clearly stipulated. Everybody knows that the next ruler of this house will be such and such. But what made this very irregular was the fact that Isaac only called for Ishmael or for Esau. 
she, he did not call for Jacob or anyone in his household. He wanted it to be only a transaction between Isaac and Esau. When typically, this would be a big gathering of every male. Note, Esau and Jacob's are twin. It would, it would be more than normal for you to expect that he would call both Esau and Jacob because they're twins. And typically what happens there is there would be a feast. This was a big celebration. It, it was like a turnover between uh, the head and the next head. That's why Isaac said, come on, have some game so that we might have a feast at least between us two. Not the whole clan, but I did not call the whole clan, which is very questionable. No question, this, this event was very important. The mere fact that Rebecca and Jacob was willing to grab that opportunity of getting the blessings shows the weight of how important this blessing of the patriarch is. And you wonder, why did Isaac did it in private? It's because Esau was his favorite. And he knows, because God said so earlier, that the blessings should be on Jacob. Especially knowing the fact that Esau sold already his birthright to Jacob. So even if this is rightfully already Jacob, Esau, uh, Isaac, still wanted to give everything to Esau. The blessings. But remember, Esau sold it already, his birthright, to Jacob. Yet, they still want to circumvent that. They wanted to pull a fast one against Jacob. He was looking... Isaac was willing to look over the fact that Esau did not care about his birthright. Esau did not care about their culture because he married two Hittite women. So instead, Isaac and Esau conspired to give all the blessings to Esau and none to Jacob. Question. What kind of a father is Isaac? He's kind of schemy. He knows that this should not be Esau, but he still gives it, he, he still plans to give it to Esau, and he had all intent and purpose in doing so. Now, unknowing to Isaac, when he was saying that to Esau, Chismosa si Rebecca. She was there listening to what Isaac and Jake Esau was talking about. Verse 5 and 6 says, Rebekah was listening while Isaac spoke to his son Esau. So when Esau went to the field to hunt for game to bring home, Rebekah said to her son Jacob, Behold, I heard your father speak to your brother Esau. Big ears, right? I don't, I don't want to say very typical, but I don't know. Is it typical? <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. <laughs> but you know what's strange about that statement? Is the fact that Rebecca refers to her son as his son Esau. And refer, refers to Jacob, Jacob as her son. You got it? You see the division between the family? He doesn't call Esau my son. He, does, he calls Esau the son of my husband. 
And, and Jacob, he's my son. Behold, I heard your father, not my husband. Speak to your brother as if he had no relationship with Esau. The terminology that was being used here shows that the family was split. Clearly, Isaac and Rebekah was not communicating. Unlike Abraham and um, Sarah, who would discuss such matters? Verse 7. Bring me some game and prepare a sacred dish for me that I may eat and bless you in the presence of the Lord before my death. As if Rebekah was quoting Isaac. Well, she was. But she, she added, in the presence of the Lord. She, she's trying to give some gravity and urgency to Jacob that this was done in the presence of the Lord. But if you think of it, if you were Jacob, if this blessing is with the blessing of Yahweh in the presence of Yahweh, if this was the plan of Yahweh, why will we sabotage it? Right? Because Rebecca said, this is the plan of God to bless Esau. And now, and now, you mom are telling me to sabotage the plan of God. Verse 8. Now therefore, my son, Listen to me as I command you. Rebecca was exerting her authority. She was not suggesting. She was commanding. Dictating to Jacob what to do. She's exerting all her maternal authority. On Jacob. So Jacob, I command you, do this. Verse 9. Go now to the flock and bring to me two choice goats from there that I may prepare them a savory dish for your father such as he loves. Then you shall bring it to your father that he may eat so that he may bless you before his death. What kind of a wife is that? A wife that is willing to deceive a husband and would involve their child in the process. Rebecca was not only planning it, she would and will be actively participating in the deception. Anak, this is the plan, huh? and I will cook it. She was not just planning it, she was actively participating in it. What kind of a husband is Isaac? Because we remember Rebecca was a godly woman when the servant slave found her who was willing to leave everything behind and follow the footsteps of Moses to go to marry somebody that she does not know because God called her. She looked at her surroundings and concluded this is the workings of God. She was an industrious and uh, energetic woman who was willing to give water to a stranger and water to ten camels. And by faith, despite meeting the servant just yesterday, she left the next day to marry somebody that she does not know. She did it all by faith. I asked myself, what happened to her? To me, no one to blame but Isaac. Because Isaac is the head of the house. But clearly, we see the house in shambles. What kind of a father is he? What kind of a husband is he? Husbands, one day, God tells us in Ephesians, we shall present our wives to God as much as Christ would present the church to God unblemished. 
And my question always to fathers is this. Will the wife that we will present to God be in shambles and in tatters? Well, in this case, it seems like that the girl whom God chose was now conspiring to deceive the husband whom God chose to be the line where the Messiah would be born. What happened to this family? It's so dysfunctional. Verse 11. Jacob answered to his mother, Rebekah, Behold, Esau, my brother, is hairy, a hairy man, and I am a smooth man. Perhaps my father will fill me. Then I will be a deceiver in his sight and will bring my, upon myself a curse and not a blessing. Rebecca now puts the child in a very bad dilemma. Will I father my will I follow my mother's command or my father's will? Because clearly he knows that. The mom said this is the will of your dad. That the blessing will be given on Esau. But my command to you, Anna, is let's deceive your dad. What a dilemma. Despite being the pet peeve, the pet of the mom, <coughs> Jacob should have instead followed the wish of the father. But you see here, Jacob had no qualms on the suggestion of the mom. The only concern is this. What if I get caught? Yeah, but that was his only issue. What if I get caught, ma? My dad will get angry at me. She did not, he did not say, Ma, I can't even think that's wrong. We're deceiving dad. And not only that, we know God wants, uh, the, uh, well, according to um, dad, he wants Esau to be blessed. Rebecca tries to manage the fear of Jacob by saying, verse 13, But his mother said to him, Your curse be on me, my son. Only obey my voice and go get them for me. <clears throat> Don't worry, my son. In Tagalog, ako nang bahala dyan. I'll handle your dad. Let, that, let all his anger fall on me. But if you look at the wording again in verse 13, I realize something. He says, she says, Your curse be on me, my son. Only obey my voice and go get them for me. It's all about me and myself, mine and me. Do this for me. <clears throat> Rebecca, to me, was really thinking about herself. And I'm guessing he's using Jacob. She's securing Jacob's future in order that her future will be secure. Because yes, the one that will inherit and get all the blessing is my son, whom is my God is mother's boy. For sure I'll be taken care of. Well, if it's Esau, that's a problem. That's why she's, she's saying here, my son, obey my voice and do it for me. At the end of the day, she's really selfish. She was looking out for her concern. That when she gets old, her favorite son will be the one to ensure to look after her. Thus, she stakes her life. Let the curse fall on me. We know in Scripture this is not possible. 
A curse given to one cannot be observed by another. But ominously, after this, Rebecca disappears from the story. In fact, she was banished. Uh, not banished. Jacob, this would be the last time that she would be seeing Jacob. Because at the end, we'll see, he was, Jacob was told to leave. And he said, you know what, Anna, leave for a few days. And I'll, I'll, I'll send somebody to pick you up when your brother's anger has subsided. That was the last time she saw Jacob. Maybe the curse fell indeed on her. Verse 14 to 17. With the plan hatch, so he went and got them and brought them to his mother. And his mother made savory food such as his father loved. Then Rebecca, Rebecca took the best garments of Esau, her elder son, which were in her in the house, and put them on Jacob, her younger son. And she put the skin of a young goat on his hand and on the smooth part of his neck. She only gave the savory food and the bread which she has made to her son Jacob. This was not an accident. This was a grand plan. And we want to ensure that all bases are covered. Even the clothes, we will use Esau so that you would smell like Esau. We will put uh, animal skin in you. We will cook <coughs> the dish that your dad would really like. This was a big production on their part. And Rebecca was in it. She was orchestrating it. Verse 18. Then he came to his father after all the, after dressing up, putting the goat skin in his body, after the mom cooked the stool, now Jacob brings it to the dad. My father, he said, here I am. <clears throat> Who are you, my son? Wow. Uh, what did I answer? Who, who am I? I'm Jacob. I'm not say that. That was not in the plan. But you know what? Jacob could have backed out. He could have backed out. Right? There's always a chance to back out. No temptation has overcome you that which is uncommon to man, but God is able to provide you a way of escape. The Bible tells us. Verse 19, Jacob said to his father, I am Esau, your firstborn. I'm sure the mom was there holding her breath. What did the father do? He discovers this. I have done what you told me. Get up, please. Sit and eat of my game that you may bless me. I am Esau. A lie straight from hell. <laughs> Remember, all this time, Esau can come back. Holy God! What are you saying here, Esau? I'm Esau! So I can imagine it's so tense. What if they come back? Ah, that will be a problem. Caught in the act. I said to his son, wait a minute. Why is it that you have been so quickly, my son? What, what, what was it? Why is it so fast? I told you to hang. That typically takes three hours. You're done in 30. And he said, because the Lord your God caused it to happen to me. Blasphemous. He used God as an excuse because Isaac was kind of curious. I ordered, I ordered delivery, which this one are. Where was the food here in 15? <laughs> right? That's busy. Why, why so fast? 
Oh, because the Lord rushed the hook. And there was no traffic, Lord. I mean, that's what he's saying. But I can imagine the panic. The mom was watching. And the son was like, oh man, I, I, my cover would be exposed. My dad would find out. Jacob compounds his lie with blasphemy. He included God in the scheme just to cover his tracks. Remember, Jacob I love. He was the elect, a deceiver, which only shows what? It was only by grace. I would not choose the son. Why would I choose you? Right? Verse 21. <clears throat> then Isaac said to Jacob, All right, you're fast. Please come close, that I may feel you, my son, whether you are really my son, Ezo, or not. Isaac was doubting. First, he said, you're too fast. He said, it's from the Lord. Hmm, I don't believe you. Come here, yeah? let me touch you. Because I remember Ezo is heavy. And Jacob is not. So there was doubt. Apparently, Isaac could not see anymore. Verse 22. So Jacob came close to Isaac, his father, and felt him and said, The voice is the voice of Jacob. But the hand at the hand of Esau. Wow. If you were, if you were, if you were uh, Jacob, probably you couldn't move anymore. Uh, that, that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I got it. But your voice. I, I can imagine Jacob sweating because he was in a eh, goat skin. Eh. He was looking a fool. No one knows it, but he was looking a fool. And, and the dad was probing and probing and probing because something's not right. You're too fast. <laughs> Your voice is different. Verse 23. He did not recognize him because his hands were hairy like his brother Esau, so he blessed him. Now, this blessing was not yet the blessing. It was like the initial blessing when you see somebody come in the house, you mm -hmm. mano, bless. It's like, blessed. Verse 24. And he said, I'm really not sure. Are you really my son, Esau? Jacob, with a batting eyelash, I am. Ha <laughs> ha. I mean, it's something like that. I mean, to the last moment, he was the, are you really my son? I am. Can you imagine the uneasiness there? Again, I ask myself, what kind of a father was Isaac that he brought up a son like that? Again, the title of my message is the glorious, victorious father. But what kind of a father is he? If your son is such. With all this, with all this thing going on, I'm sure, I'm sure Rebecca and, and Jacob was feeling so uneasy. Because they noted that Isaac was persistent. You were so fast. Right? Your voice is different. And for the last time, are, are you really Esau? Because something is not right. So what did they do? Verse 25. So he said, 
bring it to me and I will eat some game that I may bless you. And he brought it to him and he ate. He also brought him wine and he drank. What did you notice? Linasing na rin. Yes. They also brought wine to, to, because he was not asking for wine, but I think, and this is just my, my, my thinking, so that that doesn't ask us too many questions. <laughs> Let's give him some drink to read him out, because his questioning now is, is putting us in a corner. Again, what happens if, if with all this questioning, Esau arrives? Verse 26, Then his father Isaac said to him, Please come close and kiss me, my son. So he came close and kissed him, and he smelled, and the smell of his garment, he blessed him and said, See the smell of the sun. It is like the smell of the field which the Lord has blessed. Now may God give you the dew of heaven and the fatness of earth and the abundance of grain and new wine. My people serve you. And nations bow down to you. Be master of your brothers. And may your mother's sons bow, bow down to you. Curse be those who curse you. And bless be those who bless you. Basically, the blessing was given. The fertility of the land and the authority over others. Clearly, all the senses of Isaac was dull. He only had the sense of hearing that was right. Every other senses was not functioning properly. Verse 30. After the blessing was given, whew, now it came about as soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, Jacob had hardly gone out from the presence of Isaac, his father, that Esau, his brother, came in from his hunting. Barely has, has Jacob left. Esau arrived. How close he was in stopping that incident. If he was just there a few minutes earlier. Now everything was quiet in the tent. Esau now prepares the, the stew. He did not know what happened. He was there probably in a cheerful mood. Flush with the success of his son, expecting the best. It's like saying, Anak, come here tonight, huh? I'll give you now your mana. Oh, I'm in a good mood. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good mood moment. My inheritance will be given to me. Happy, happy. But he did not know what just transpired. Right? Then he also made savory food. And maybe when he was cooking, he was singing. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> and brought it to his father and said to his father, Let my father arise and eat of his son's game, that you may bless me. I said, said oh, wait a minute. Hello. <laughs> What's going on? Right? Verse 32. Isaac said to him, And who are you? And he said, I'm your son, your firstborn Esau. What? What is happening here? Then Isaac trembled violently. violently. The word there, he was gripped by uncontrollable <laughs> trembling. In fact, the, literally, the literal word in there is he trembled a very great trembling. He was shaking. I can imagine he's getting high blood. What is going here? It is an intense alarm. In fact, the Hebrew cannot depict wordings that would des describe a more panic situation. That word, he trembled violently, was the most graphic Hebrew word that can be used. 
of the panic that was happening now in the mind of Isaac. What? The slow realization. Who then, who was he then that hunted game and brought it to me? So that I ate all of it before you came and blessed him. Yes, and he shall be blessed. Who was that one who said he was Esau? Who, who brought the game and I blessed him and that blessing was irrevocable. When Esau heard the word of his father, he cried out with an exceeding great and bitter cry and said to his father, bless me even also, O oh my father. The son matched the, the violent reaction of the father with his own extreme distress. He was praying, Lord, a father, bless me also. I have suffered unfairly again by my brother. He, he, he deceived me in getting my birthright. Now he's deceived me in giving away and getting my blessings. Dad, give me one more blessing. And he was pleading. Because the dad said, I gave the blessing. And it's irrevocable. 35, and he said, your brother came deceitfully and has taken away your blessings. Then he said, is he not rightly named Jacob? For he has supplanted me these two times. <coughs> he took away my birthright and behold, now he has taken away my blessing. And he said, have you not received a blessing for me? Wow. But honestly, he did not take away his birthright. Isa sold it. He just didn't want to accept the responsibility that he sold it. Now he's claiming that his brother stole it. In reality, he sold it for a bowl of stew. 37. Isaac replied to Isa, Behold, I have made him your master. And all his relatives I have given to him as servants. And with grains and new wines I have sustained him. Now as for you then, what can I do, my son? can't do anything. Esau said to his father, do you have only one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O oh, my father. So Esau lifted up his voice and wept. He knew it. He knew that he lost it. Verse 39. 39 it says then Isaac his father answered and said to him behold away from the fertility of the earth shall you shall be your dwelling away from the dew of the heavens from above by your sword you shall live and your brothers you shall serve and it shall come about when you come become restless that you will break his yoke from your neck what's so sad is when Isaac gave a blessing to Jacob. It was an anti-blessing. Because there was no blessing left. That's the sad truth there. He inherits an anti-blessing. 41. So Esau bought a grudge against Jacob because of the blessing which his father had blessed him. And Esau said to himself, The days of mourning for my father are near. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. Walang hiya siya. I'm going to kill him. Now when the word of his elder son Esau reported to Rebekah, she sent and called her younger son Jacob and said to him, Behold, your brother is counseling himself concerning you by planning to kill you. Eventually, because he, you, you, you noted there, Esau told, said to himself, I will kill my brother. But eventually, the, mo the mother found out. What does it mean? He was now spreading that news. I'm going to kill him. Uh, maybe he's telling his friends, 
One day he'll get this day. Once my dad dies, he'll die with me. Word went to Rebecca. Wow. What a family, right? 43. Now, therefore, my son, obey my voice. Arise, flee to Haran, to my brother Laban. Stay with him a few days until your body's fury subside. Stay with him a few days. Sabi ko nga eh. She thought it would just be a few days. Until your brother's anger against you subsides and he forgets what you did to him. Then I will send and get you from there. Why should I be bereaved of both, of you both in one day? Rebecca was now forced to send Jacob away. Thinking only that it will be a few days. How messy is this family? A father and a son. A mother and a son. A husband against a wife. A wife against a husband. Brother against brother. The sinfulness. The selfishness of all parties. The humanness of the story cannot be glossed over. The greed, the deception is front and center in this story. Now you might ask me, Bobby, then why is the message of your, why is the message entitled the glorious victory of the Father? When all we see here is the failure of the Father in managing his household. Because if you ask me, it was a total failure. But the thing here is we must realize that the Bible is not about man. It's the Bible is not about Jacob or not about Isaac. The Bible is about God, our Heavenly Father. And the thing is, the Word of God stands. Man's sin Man's, man's fighting within the family will not thwart the plans of God. Despite the scheminess of both, of both the husband and the wife against each other, despite the deception, despite all those malice and bitterness and anger and threat of life, all of that does not thwart the plan of God. The older will serve the younger. Jacob I love, Esau I hate. That's why the title of this message is the glorious victory of the Father. Not because of Isaac, but because of God. That his plan was fulfilled. Despite the sinfulness and the mess of the family. That's how sovereign our God is. He's able to work His victorious, glorious plan despite our sinfulness. In the end, who got the blessing? Jacob. As planned and as designed by God. In the midst of the sin and fallenness of the family of Isaac. That's why this story is about the glorious victory of the Father. Not Isaac, but our Heavenly Father. Joshua 23 verse 14 says, Not one word of all the good word which the Lord our God spoke concerning has failed. All has been fulfilled for you. Not one of them has failed. It shall come about that just all the good words which the Lord your God spoke to you would have come upon you. Numbers 23 says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and will he not do it? Or has he spoken, and will he not make it good? Joshua 21, 45 says, not one of all the Lord's good promise to Israel failed. Everyone was fulfilled. 
Ezekiel 12, 28 says, None of my word will be delayed any longer. Whatever I say will be fulfilled, declares the Sovereign Lord. The story of Genesis 27 is the works of God will come to fruition. Despite the foul schemes and sinfulness and fallenness of man, God does not approve of the schemes of Rebecca and Jacob. But that does not stop the plan of God. The issue is not if the plan of God will work out in our life. It will work out. The only issue is will we reach it with much pain and hardship? Jacob does not escape this unscathed. He was driven out penniless, never to see his mother again, being hunted by his twin brother. Do you think if, if Rebecca and Jacob did not scheme in this manner that the blessing will not be theirs? It will. The only problem now is because of their sins, there are consequences to that. But still, the blessing will go to them. Now, why do you want to bring in all the pains and hardships along the way when it's totally unavoidable and, and the blessing will be yours eventually? My desire is that we learn from this episode not to take things into our hands and try to work out the plan of God in our life. But we are to be patiently waiting on the Lord to work out His plan in our life at His own time. Lord, I'm impatient anymore. I'm impatient already. Work it out or else I'll take it into my own hands. Don't. It, your tantrums will not change the will of God. It will only add pain and hurt into your life. The blessing was Jacob from the start because God said, it's to Jacob I will give. There was no need to deceive. There was no need to conspire. It was a done deal. <coughs> they just couldn't wait. They just didn't trust God. The plans of God will come into fruition. That is for sure. Our job is to wait for it patiently and not in Tagalog, pangunahan ang Panginoon. Don't go ahead of God. For we have a glorious, victorious Father who knows what is really best for us. We are just to be patiently waiting upon Him. Thus says the Lord.